Meanwhile, Axios reports that the U.S. military has been preparing to give all the aid to Israel that they can. The American General Kurilla, in charge of United States Central Command will arrive in Israel on Monday to help finalize coordination with the Israeli Defense Forces ahead of a possible Iranian attack. Channel 12 reports from an Israeli government source that the Shin Bet has completed its preparation for the operation of the underground command and control bunker in Jerusalem, intended for the conduct of wars by the political security elite of the state. The bunker is equipped with all means of command and control, connected to the pit in Kriya and all the other bunkers, it allows a long stay, is independent from all other bunkers and is immune to all existing threats. Sources tell the Lebanese al Maadine news agency that Iran's response will cross Israel's red lines. Right after the report of Iran crossing Israel's red lines came out, the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu made a declaration. Here is what he said. Israel is now in a multi-front war against the Iranian axis of evil. We are ready for any scenario, either defensive or offensive. I repeat to our enemies we will respond and exact a heavy price for any act of aggression against us, from any arena. Additional cruisers and destroyers which have an Aegis system for intercepting ballistic missiles will be deployed to United States European Command, which means probably on the coast of Israel. They will also be deployed to United States Central Command, which probably means off the coast of Iran. Meanwhile on the diplomatic front, the Jordanian Foreign Minister, Ayman al-Safadi, traveled to Iran for a last shot at diplomacy. He met in Tehran with acting Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Bakri Khani, which was the first visit between the two countries since 2015. The Jordanian Foreign Minister made the point to Iran that Jordanian skies wouldn't be used for war against anyone. Back during the April Iranian attack, Jordan intercepted a lot of drones and missiles going to Israel. It's not clear if the message to Iran means that Jordan will help Israel again, or the opposite. In the same report, it is pointed out that the U.S. and Israel expects Iran to attack as soon as Monday Israel time, so late Sunday night American time. It also says that the Pentagon reported an increase in American forces in the Middle East, including warships and fighter jets to the region. The USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group that is now in Guam is going to replace the USS Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group, which is currently deployed in the region. The Wall Street Journal reports that Iran rejected every call from American and Arab states to moderate its response to the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. Also very interesting but not confirmed, the Kuwaiti newspaper Al Jarida reports that the U.S. sent a secret delegation from Turkey to Iran to try to avoid a full-scale regional war. The U.S. met with high-level senior Iranian officials and came with a message to calm the freak down because things are about to escalate to a whole new level and nobody wants that. The meeting lasted two hours. The American delegation said that Biden was pissed off at Netanyahu who's always trying to sabotage peace talks and always escalating when things are calming down. That the U.S. doesn't want war with Iran but it will protect Israel and if Iran launches a big attack on Israel, it will give the Israeli prime minister all the power to decide where things go from there and it will not end well. Meanwhile as the war might be about to start, people are finally getting their butts off in Lebanon and trying to leave the country. The airport is overflowing with people. Anyway, I'll be posting new videos as the situation develops. From everything I'm reading and seeing, I really think this time a full-scale war will happen unfortunately. It's very different compared to the Iranian attack on April 13 and this time Hezbollah is involved, the hardliners are in control in Lebanon, Iran, and Israel. There's almost no chance that it doesn't lead to full-scale war. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Anyway, stay safe people.